All right, awesome. So we're we're recording now. I'm live with Mr. Michael Wiseman. Uh, Mike, thanks for joining us, man. Pleasure. Yeah, we're gonna do some uh, some live role play today. Um, we'll also do some some Q and A after. And if anybody else wants to jump in on, on what, as well, we can, we can. We're happy to do that. So what I'm sharing on the screen really are the um, you know the reasons why the holidays the winter, the spring, you know, uh, are a good time to sell. And so what we're going to come up with against right now are people are waiting. You know, a lot of people we're calling expired physicals, people we know, people in the database are going to say, well, I'm going to wait till spring or I'm going to wait till after the holidays or, you know, or COVID. And, you know, those, those are, you know, real COVID's a real issue we're dealing with right now. Wait until the spring. Uh, you know, it's, it's a real thing, but I'm, um, you know, there's, there's ways around that and with all, like all these things. So these four things right here are really something that everybody should, before you even start making these calls, read through these and understand, you know, you know, why this is important. Number one is less competition. Number two, there's more motivated buyers, right? And uh, number three, the home looks great. Uh, number four, there's a the tax benefits to doing it now. So these are some of the reasons why it's a, uh, besides, it's not just like, hey, Mike wants to take your listing now. It's no, there's actual benefits to it, right, Mike? Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. So what do you, th what, so what do you say to, I mean, what do you want to say to people, Mike, when you, we talk about this, before we get into like the actual scripting of it, you know, when you, when you look at this sheet, mm -hmm. like what, what is, what, what does that, what does that say to you? You mean these 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 particular points here when you speak in a client, or? Yeah. So what I'm doing, Mike, is I I actually created an email with this, mm. and I'm sending this to clients mm. even before our calls. I sent it to my whole database yesterday. It's a good idea. You know, to 1,200 people saying, "Hey, I get it. People are waiting. You know, if you're considering waiting till the spring, here's a few things to consider." Mm. And I created a simple email and shot it out with these four tips. Yeah. I'm gonna make a great video also. People should do, you know, do this great, great video vlog, you know, vlog posts, video posts. Yeah, I love that idea. I think the um, video is brilliant. Um, I mean, yeah, look, I think you have to get to the 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 first step in any kind of script, right? Is get into that motivation if they if they really, you know, do want if they are real sellers, right? If they're gonna be sellers, they really want to sell or have a need to sell, or there's a strong desire to sell. And then if there's something holding them back, that's an objection or a concern, as opposed to like a condition that really limits them, then yeah, then this, and if, and if it relates to one of these four things that we have up here, then absolutely you want to get to the bottom of it and help them see that there might be another path, right? And maybe mm. an advantage that, as you want to always, I always look at it that you don't want to negate somebody because they don't want, you know, they can get enough of that anywhere. <laughs> But mm. I want to un understand and I want to be able to take their sort of their no and turn it into a reason why they might look at the flip side of that. Every no has a yes on the other side. So yeah. Sort of taking them through that and say, oh, I, I understand why you're thinking that way. Right. And that may also, but that's also could be exactly why everybody, you know, you might want to do this. Yeah. Bring them back to close to something. You're not going to try to, you know, that's, and, that, and that's predicated on the fact that they're for sure motivated to sell. You know, we, we all know that we're not going to convince somebody to sell a house. So they don't really want to sell it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you nailed the, mo the motivation part, right? This is only going to work with motivated people. So mm -hmm. are the people you're talking to actually motivated? And then the other thing you mentioned was condition, you know, so there's conditions and then there's objections, right? And I think right. sometimes agents will confuse the two because mm -hmm. when you like a condition could be an example of, um, I can't sell my house because I owe 400,000 in the home market value right now is 250. Right. That's a condition, right? right. Or, or condition could be, I have COVID right now and I can't show my house because I'm in bed and right. That's something you're not going to help somebody past that objection, right? The, right. The, right. The, the, the other objection, no, the 400 and it's worth 250. You could help someone pass that with a short sale. Potentially. Yep right? A short sale or, or other options. Mm -hmm. So I think people have to understand that as well, right? Right. So these four here, so the first one is there's less competition. So 
again, for people that are watching this, people that are on right now, what I would encourage you to do is read through all of these, um, you know, even read it, you know, read through them with your wife, your husband, your kids, you know, and so you understand, hey, listen, you're not the only homeowners who's actually considered taking your house off the market right now during the holidays, right? Um, you know, most people don't want to deal with the hassle, right? But the most, the new sellers, you know, a lot of people are deciding to wait till the spring to put their house up to sell. But the great news for you is because there's not as much inventory, essentially, your home is going to get the buyer's attention, right? So reduced inventory means more buyers are checking out your home, either online or in person. So these are some things that you want to know before you start making these calls, right? You're going to want to know motivated buyers, right? Everyone takes time out of their busy schedule uh, to shop for new homes, but only serious buyers are out in the winter, right? Like only the most serious people are gonna come out and look at homes when there's snow on the ground and it's 10 degrees out. So people need to understand that, you know, there's also tax reasons. Another thing that's really cool is if you look at the fourth one, the third one is emotion. Emotion plays, right? Emotion's a huge reason why people buy homes. Think about it. Your house is decorated. It looks amazing. It's set up for the holidays. There's a, there's a nice aura. There's a, you know, it's like there's smells of, you know, cinnamon and Christmas and blah, right. And people are coming through the house. It's amazing. That's what, you know, that's going to help you sell the house more. Right. So that is the emotional part. Right. Um, so there's so many benefits to, to selling right now. Um, you know, having a house that's decorated nice and, People can see themselves and their family celebrating the holidays there. These are the things that we need to understand inherently before we start calling on these people. Mike, you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I mean, that's that's really nails it right there. Um, but most people aren't going to think of <clears throat> think in this in this manner. Right. So, again, it's trying to turn that no and to look at, well, when you send a note or something, say, you know, what's, what's the other side of that? You know, what's their, you know, what are they not considering to come at that decision to make that they're coming up with not now? Mm. Mm. And um, it's all in the presentation too. We'll go through the role play, obviously, but I think it's going to, it's all be, yeah, you, know, you have to be really careful not to negate people not to use language so when you say negate what do you mean by that like you well, mean I've, make I've them heard, wrong for example, that, yeah i mean yeah sometimes wrong? yeah you, you don't want to you, you want to you don't want to let make someone tell them they're doing something wrong you know and some examples i've heard even some of the language that that we tend to use or i've heard used um for for example i've heard people say like you know you know with all due respect and, and they'll fill something after that sometimes because you think it might be you know, but generally what's what happens after that is comes out it's not you're basically telling them you're just doing your, your thinking is wrong and i'm going to tell you why um the other phrase that um i think what the one i heard also was um help me understand so sometimes you'll, you'll hear agents say that and i've used it also and occasionally but i've stopped using it because oh. when you say to help me understand that's also kind of like you negating their thought process you're saying i don't understand what you're talking about at all so mm. being able to to bring up and give them, let them come sort of the conclusion on their own with proper questioning that comes in the scripting so that they come to the conclusion. Yeah, there actually is another side to this. And maybe I'm not thinking that through. That's sort of the, the difference between the art and the, you know, and of the art of, of role playing and scripting. And and it just comes with time, you know, having conversation. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know. It does. I think, you, and you know, to simplify it, we don't want to make people wrong. You know, I think yeah. that's right. like when you're like when you're calling for sale by owners. You know, I think one of the mistakes a lot of real estate agents make is you know you'll call a for sale by owner and they'll say, well, yeah, yeah, I'm not paying agents. As a matter of fact, I dealt with this this morning. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, okay, interesting. I said, okay, well, I'm just curious. I mean, why why are you taking that approach mm -hmm. as opposed to well, what do you mean you're not paying agents? We have all the buyers. Like, what are you stupid? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't always come out in that exact language, but that's like the tonality. And you know what I mean? And that's like how, how some agents will respond to that. You know, like mm -hmm. what's wrong with you? What do you mean you're not paying agents? Like, don't you understand we have all the buyers? Yeah, you could, you could say that, but you got to say it the right way. It's in all right. of how we say things. Exactly. So, all right, awesome. Let's jump into uh, into this, this script then. So, um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving you a call. I'll go first. And then we, like I said, everybody can jump in, ask questions. Sure. Um, you know, so, so, um, so Mike, Hey, uh, um, good to connect with you again, man. 
How's it going? It's going good. That's so I'm I'm the seller, right? Okay. Yeah, you can be the seller. Okay, good. Great. So hey, listen, I I you know I get it. Um, you you plan on waiting till the spring. Mm -hmm. Um, so is yeah, that yeah. you know we that's what we you just you said last time when we spoke last week. So right. is that still the plan? I mean, yeah, we have the holidays coming up. I mean, it's the week before Thanksgiving, and you know, so much uncertainty going on now. I think we're just going to do better off. We'll be better off, uh, you know, re revisiting this in the spring. Okay, awesome. And I'm going to go right into the script now for everybody listening. So, all right. So, you know, hey, listen, I get it. I understand the plan. I mean, frankly, Mike, I mean, that's what most people do. However, I'm curious. If you were presented with an offer with a price that you really loved, would you accept it now? Or would you still wait till uh, wait till spring or after the holidays? Well, it's a interesting question. I mean, a price that we really love. Um, I mean, we'd, you know, I, I suppose we wouldn't necessarily turn down a, you know, a really a high price. I mean, a top dollar price if it was, if it, if it, um, that being said, I don't think that many people are out there even shopping right now looking for houses. I mean, it seems that this is a slow time of year and maybe it'd be a mistake to put it on the market right now. And, and, uh, you know, when there's less buyers sure. out, right? Sure, sure. So let me, so again, my, just, you know, just to get back to the question, um, if we brought you something that, you know, what, what would be an offer right now that would just super get you, get you really excited and be like, you know what, I got to make this happen. What would mm -hmm. be the number? Um, well, I mean, we were listed at 395. So, I mean, you know, if, if we kind of expected to get over a list as what our agent was telling us, there'd be some bidding wars that didn't really materialize, mm -hmm. but you know, if we were north of, you know, 400,000 or, or north of that, I suppose that would be able to get our attention. Okay. Awesome. So if I brought you 400, you would mm -hmm. take it right now and you'd figure everything else out. I mean, it would depend on the terms and everything and how, you know, what, what, uh, I mean, every, we have to look at the offer. Okay. But I mean, if someone, if someone, I guess if someone's out there and wants to write a check for four hundred thousand dollars, and it's a, it's a good, clean offer, a cash offer. I mean, I mean, geez, I guess we could probably, you know, work with that. Sure. Okay, perfect. And that's exactly why we need to meet. So, I've got an opening. I can come by this afternoon at three, Mike. Or do you? Would you rather be come by tomorrow around one o'clock? Um, this is what. This is what. You mean, you've seen the house online, right? Because you, you've been, you've looked at our. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seeing a house online, no, and actually going through the house are two completely separate things. So what I'd actually like to do is take a look at the house and meet you. And then I'll let you know if I can do that. And here's the cool thing. Listen, mm -hmm. if, if I don't think I can do that right now, I'm just going to be up front with you. And mm -hmm. we can talk about doing something in the spring. It's no big deal. You're not mm -hmm. under any obligation mm -hmm. to sign with me. I just want to take a look at the house and meet you. So yeah. do you think which of those times would work better for you? Okay. And let's, we go for tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to stop there and then mm -hmm. we're going to go into it again. But the first paragraph, really what that's doing is, is finding motivation because what I did was I kept kind of, you know, continued to say, listen, if I brought you this, would you take it now? Mm -hmm. Because if you kept saying no, then what's the point of meeting with you? Do you get that? So if I said, Mike, if I brought you an offer for 450 right now, mm -hmm. cash, close in a week, would you accept that? And you're like, no, I can't. I'm not going to. I, I'm waiting until spring. Mm -hmm. Then there's no more reason for us to meet, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to meet. I'm going to get you set up on an email campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay in front of you and I'm going to touch base with you in March, mm -hmm. right? Or mm -hmm. February. So that's really what the first paragraph here is designed to do. It's a design to find out if this is somebody that actually makes sense to even continue trying to close. Right. Right. And then once you agree, then I just use the simple closing line, which is, you know, that's exactly why we need to meet to meet. And then we use an alternative choice close. Right. Yeah. All right. So you want to, you want to pick it up now and you can do one and I'll be the seller. Um, sure. The same script. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll just okay. go through it. Okay. So ring, ring. Hello. Hey, David. It's uh, Mike from uh, EXP Realty. Um, we spoke about uh, two weeks ago. How are you doing? Hey, good, man. How about you? Excellent. Excellent. Thank um, Reason for my call is I know when we spoke about two weeks back, you mentioned that, you know, the holidays are coming. You were thinking about waiting until spring. And I want to circle back with you and was just curious to, to ask, 
um, and I'm not sure if this is for you, but if you were presented, you know, with a price that you really loved, uh, would you um, be willing to accept it now? Or you, would, that's, would you still be pushing off till spring? Hmm. I don't know. Do you, do you have somebody? Um, I don't have anybody like in my back pocket or right in mind, but you know, we have a, a bunch of buyers coming through now and you know, a lot of people don't realize that buyers that come out this time of year um, are definitely your serious buyers and they may be the ones that'll write the biggest checks. So, mm. you know, I felt like I really had to call you and say, you know, I know it's spring is what you were thinking. Um, but if you got that right price, you know, a price you really love that made sense for you, um, would you be accepting it now? Would you be able to, would you be okay with that now? Yeah. I mean, I would be okay with it right now, but I just don't mm. want to list a house. So, I mean, if you have somebody then mm. yeah, by all means, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll consider right. the offer, but I, yeah, I don't okay. want to put the house on the yeah. market. Fair enough. Fair enough. David, what's remind me again, uh, we, we talked about some, you didn't talk too much about pricing, but what, what just, and I'm not going to hold you to it, but what's the number that you have in your head basically that makes the most sense for you? Well, like, you know, like if, if I got four, you know, four, anything over above 470, 475, I think it was on it for, okay. you know, 469. But when you mm -hmm. called, you know, you said you thought we could do better. So, okay. Yeah. If anything yeah. above that, I guess would make me excited. All right. Fair enough. So what if I'm hearing is if you, if we could produce an offer, procure an offer of 475 or in that or close to that, then you'd be, uh, and you'd entertain it. That's awesome. So look, this is a, that's exactly why we should really get together. You know, I thought about it, and I'm thinking, stop by for a few minutes, you know, check out the house, see it in person, and uh, you know, go from there. Would um, would today around uh, three o'clock or, or tomorrow at one o'clock be better for you? You know, again, I, I think um, I think ultimately, if you know, if you had somebody right now that was gonna give me that, I'd. But I just like I said, I'm just not really into. You know, my wife either does. We just don't want to deal with the, the listing the house during the holidays. It's just we got family coming. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a pain, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally, I totally get it. It's, it's definitely not the most convenient time. People. Plus, you know, I, I know there's not as many people looking. It's like every, it's real slow now. You know, I think it's a, a good time to wait till the spring. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, that's that's an interesting. Most people do kind of think that way, um, but like I just I had mentioned is that the buyers that are out there that are also, you know, going out and taking time out of their holiday season and their schedule, um, they do tend to sometimes write the biggest checks and, you know, and, and pay top dollar for the houses because they are motivated to get out there in the holidays in the winter time. So look, it's like this, man, I won't waste your time. You know, if I can see the house, get some eyeballs on it, give you an idea. If I think we can bring in that 475 or better, I'll tell you if I think it's better way for spring, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll set up a quick plan for that you know, either way, but there's no pressure here. So, you know, why don't we do tomorrow at, uh, at two o'clock or if you even want to push it to Friday, that's fine also. Um, I mean, do you have somebody right now? I mean, I know there's not, there's just, you know. Could be, <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, we, like okay. I said, there's not, there's not a particular buyer, but that we know of, but they're coming in to us. We're getting in people every week, you know, on a daily basis are reaching out. We just had, a, we had a gal fly out from California, buy a place for, you know, 850 fly back. Um, we're going to increase on a daily basis. All right. Uh, awesome. Your, I'd, I'd like to know what yours, you know, that yours might be available and I won't waste your time. I mean, I'm not going to be bringing, bringing people through. It's just me, you know, 15, 20 minutes, take a look at the house. We'll have a chance to, to meet, you know, face to face with masks and whatnot. <laughs> we'll keep it safe. And look, if, we'll go from there. All right. Awesome. Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right. So. All right, man. Good job. So, so you have all this already in your head, right? You don't, you don't need to read the script, right? Well, so I have the script in front of me, but I'm, I'm just, I'm so a, yeah. I, I think for people listening that don't necessarily have all this already in their head, I want, I want I'm going to go through and use the script so people can see like pretty much how easy it is to just read mm -hmm. the most part, the script. And, right. and, and it doesn't have to be verbatim. It doesn't right. work, but, but it, it keeps, it keeps the conversation kind of moving. Mm -hmm. Like for, so for people that don't have, like, you have a lot of skills. That's why I asked you to do this. With me, right. But you, and you're like me, I, I don't, I'll, I don't need a script in front of me to make these calls anymore because I've been doing it for so long. Right. Right. Um, yet, you know, the script, it, it helps. And for people that don't have that same experience, I think it's really, really important. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start over from the top again and I'm going to go right through it. All right. So sure ring, yep. ring. 
Hello. Mike, hey, Dave Hill. How are you today, sir? Doing awesome, Dave. How are you? Good, good. Hey, did I get you to a bad time? Uh, no, no. It's, it's, um, it's all right. Yeah. Got uh, a minute. Great, great. Well, listen, great news, man. I, I wanted to reconnect with you. I know you said a few weeks ago you were probably waiting till the spring, but I also know that, you know, situations definitely change. And man, we are seeing such a low inventory right now. I just thought you might want to take advantage of that. Is that something you thought about? I mean, you know, not really, to be honest. It's just, it's the holiday time. And, you know, I know inventory is down. People have, have heard that around. and But I figured it won't be, it'll still be, you know, not much different in the spring. So it's not really the right time for us. Well, it, I mean, it definitely could be, you know, Mike, because I certainly don't have a crystal ball, you know. I And, and if I did, I certainly could predict what's going to happen in the future, but mm. I can't. Um but what I can tell you is right now is tremendous. We're seeing clients might get anywhere from five to 15% above their asking price number on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, would that excite you if you were able to get, you know, the five to 15%, like your house came off at 400. What would mm -hmm. it look like if somebody made you an offer of 430 or 435? Would that excite you? I mean, it would It would just excite me more in the spring because I don't really want to move in the winter. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So, all right. Good. Well, I appreciate you being honest and upfront with me then. So uh, basically yeah. what you're saying is even if I brought you an offer of 435 or 450, you wouldn't take it. You wouldn't move. It would be, it would be uh, a challenge for, you know, you know, I, you know, I have to talk to my wife and, and, you know, see more about it, but it's, it wouldn't be so, uh, you know, I, I would just wonder if that we can, couldn't get the same or more in the spring the way things are going, you know, again, it, it's it's hard to know. The only thing that we do know for certain is all we can control is right now, right? What's in front of us? And mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing this for eighteen years, and mm -hmm. I've been very surprised by markets shifting one way or the other. And here's the other thing you want to think about, right? With mm -hmm. COVID, uh, with the uh, unemployment, with the uncertainty, with the election, there's a lot of things that could happen. Um, so again, I'm encouraging my clients to focus on the opportunity right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I mean, if let's just say somebody we brought you a bag of money, and and it was it was four fifty, mm -hmm. but you had to be out of your house in thirty days. Can you guys mm -hmm. somehow make that work? Because if you can't, that's fine. We'll 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 continue this conversation in February or March. But if you right, can, right. is is that something you guys want to talk about? Um, I may suppose it was 450. We might, we might have a conversation. Okay. All right. Awesome. Then that's, that's why we should meet, you know, and, and here's the other thing too, is I know some of the clients we're talking to don't necessarily want to sell now because they don't want to deal with the showings of the house and, you know, the holidays and all the other things. So some of the advantages right now, Mike, is that, you know, um, people, there's actually less showings mm -hmm. because there's less buyers out. So the only buyers that are out right now during these times of year are super motivated, serious, serious buyers. Mm -hmm. So the good news is you have less people, less traffic in your home, and you have the most motivated buyers that are actually willing to pay more. And usually the ones that are out right now, they're, they're either buying for personal reasons or mm -hmm. they're or very, you know, sometimes very personal reasons or, 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 um, or relocation. Right. All right. I hear. Okay. So, uh, is there a time where both you and your wife will be home? I can come by and take a look. I've got some yeah. opening. Yeah, Saturday usually five thirty. Um. Yeah, probably maybe, maybe tomorrow in, in the mid afternoon, something like that. We'll both be around. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. We'll and we'll stop right there. Cool. There you go. So it's cool. I saw you kept to the script a little, definitely a little more. Um. But you can still see how we 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 you and I both you, you kick into instinct mode. <laughs> It's almost well, and it, it's, it's hard to, to, because it's, it's all in, yeah, it's internal. It's all, so cause we, it's, yeah, because it's it's just, but if people on this call should realize that just comes from doing the, doing the, you know, if I can go back to my first calls, I actually have them because I, I called through a dialer and it records almost all the calls and they're horrible. <laughs> you, know, it's mm. like, you know, it's like, you know, go back a year and a half when I first hit in the phones and it's, you know, it's, ah, uh, I don't know what to say next. And so people should realize that this is, you know, it's just time, you know, but having this script in front of you and, and then internalizing it makes all the difference because, you know, it kind of know what to say. Yeah. It's time on task over time, right? Exactly. Yep. Um, exactly. 
so it's just yeah the more you do it so there's also um you know there's some other ones here there's some other lines i mean if there's a significant advantage to selling now so so you know what the interesting thing is as i'm going through this what i realize is the first paragraph here is so strong it's almost too strong for, to use this because what ends up happening is if you get someone to agree that yeah shit i'll take excuse me like, yeah i'll take the the 400 or 450 it's almost like you just go right to the close you don't have to go into anything else right so you almost need someone to say well no nah, i don't know i'm not i'm not you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then you can get into well did you know that most buyers who are looking right now are very serious and have to buy now many for relocation or personal reasons right so you're actually getting fewer showings with more motivated buyers I don't know. Well, another advantage for you is the fact that most sellers take down off the market. So there's low, low, um, so there's less inventory, right? Um, so then you can really get into this stuff. Mm -hmm. But right. did you notice when you had said, well, wait till spring, what did I do? I scrolled right down to crystal ball mm -hmm. because in my mind, it reminded me, okay, somebody says, wait till spring. I don't have a crystal ball because I've done it so many times. Right. Right. And then right. here's a great line right here on the second page. It says, you know, um, why don't we take a look at the home? And I'll be honest with you. If I think I can sell now, great. If, if I can't, we can always wait. I said that to you in our role play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've said right? Like, what do you have to lose? Yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm taking any expectation or any commitment off your, you know, off you, off you. Like, you're not, like, you're not making any commitment to listing the house with me. We're just coming by, take a look and see if we can help. Worst case scenario, we'll help you in the spring. Mm -hmm. Another one is COVID. I'm not sure what you're using for COVID, but this comes up a lot. Do you want to role play this one with me? You can sure. be the agent. I'll be the seller first. Sure. All right. Awesome. Okay. And uh, if you have your own script, it's fine. Or um, you no, can I'll use, use I'll this. Use we'll go through okay. these. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So. So I, David, I, I totally get that um, you're concerned about COVID. I mean, you know, that's uh, certainly a, 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 val a valid concern. Right. Heather's right. saying there's no sound on. Oh, really? The, um, oh, yeah. really? On which one? What platform? On the Facebook, I guess. Yeah. So if there's no sound, what I'll do is I'll drop the really? video later. Is she? That is, is it? Un, is there a way to unmute it for sure? Is it the? You know, it might be because it. remember I said earlier before we started how for some reason it seemed like my I have an iPad and a laptop set up and it mm -hmm. seemed like my iPad was the primary where normally it's the other way around. Like my laptop would be primary and my iPad would be secondary. I think because my well, no, because you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if yeah. you can hear me, why wouldn't you be able to hear on Facebook? Yeah, I don't That's know. I, I didn't check. The All right. Facebook anyway, yeah, let's just get back okay. into it. We'll okay. drop the video later. Sorry about that. All right. See, so you're going to, you just gave me the objection. Moment. So why don't you start by giving me the objection so we can go, go yeah, into it. Yeah. You know, Mike, I, I mean, listen, with COVID and everything going on, we're just going to, we're just going to hang tight for a while and see how that works out. Okay. No, I, I, I totally understand that, um, you know, COVID is a, is a concern. It's not just, obviously it's everybody's concern right now. And I understand safety is the number one priority. Um, so I just want you to know that we follow all CDC guidelines and we track, you know, their site weekly and our, our local um, laws weekly. And we've been able to minimize showings with a very strategic four day um, open house plan where we limit how many people enter the house for two days, followed up by a strategic open house on Saturday or Sunday, which typically leads to a bidding war on Monday. So we've really narrowed down how many times you have to open your house up. You can plan for it. You know, we use the gloves, the booties, everything. Um, and the last person we did it for got 35,000 over the asking price. So David, I'm just curious if, if we're able to do the same thing for you and protect your family in the same way, how open-minded would you be to consider, you know, looking at that? Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I like the idea of getting 35,000 over asking price, but okay. I, yeah. Yeah, look at this point. I just wonder how if you'd be open minded to, to take a look at that. We sit down, you know, we decide if it's right for you. If it's not right for you, hey, it's no worries. I'm not trying to force anything, anybody, but why don't we get together for, you know, a few minutes either this afternoon at time about three o'clock or tomorrow around, around two, which is which works, which works better for you? Yeah, I think tomorrow would work well. Okay. Yeah, why don't you come? Why don't you come by tomorrow and we'll take awesome. a look? Awesome. Look forward All to right. seeing you. Well, 
So right. I, I, I haven't seen it before, but I just, you know, ad lib. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, but it's, um, this, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry, right? Yeah. And so yeah. We, and here's what we've been doing. And this has happened on like my last five listings in a row mm -hmm. is we set it up so that the house comes on on a Wednesday or Thursday. We hold showings. We do let people go in. We used to make the mistake of letting people in at an open house. But what ended up happening was there was too many people. So now what we do is we let the showings happen for two days, mm -hmm. you know, 15 minute blocks so people can go through. And then we do a final open house to let everybody in. And the good news is most people have already come through. So it's not a chaotic open house with a hundred people waiting outside. Mm -hmm. And then we, we take all our offers on Monday and then we make a decision on Tuesday morning mm -hmm. and it's just been working fantastic. So the good thing for the seller is they only have to deal with this for one week or four days, you know, one weekend and we get the offer they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've done it also this way in, in certain markets for us that are hotter. Certain ones that are not, not as hot where we are. I mean, we're in some of our rural areas. Um, but still, the strategy kind of works for sure. You know. Oh, it definitely works. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. You know. And then the other thing that I like to throw in there is how we offer our 28-day guarantee. Our tw and uh, you know, if they're not 100% satisfied after 28 days, they can cancel the contract with us and take us off the market. You know, so basically what we're saying to them is, hey, listen, let us let us show you what we can do. Give us a week or give us 28 days. And, and if it's not sold, then, yeah, we'll look at plan B. And here's the other thing. You know, I I had a seller say to me that she thought she said, I, my, I think my house is cleaner now than <laughs> than when I left, because it was because we went through and we disinfected all the counters and all the, cat, you know, the surfaces and, you know, it was, that's what we did. You know, the house probably smelled fresher because of that when we left and she got a, a, an amazing offer on the property, you know? So you want to share those types of stories with people. That's why that's in there. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have your own story, then share my story with someone say, Hey, one of my associates did an open house and they used gloves and booties. They had disinfectant wipes. They had sanitizer on every counter. And they ended up with an offer 35,000 over. And then the seller, not only that, but she said, Hey, my house is actually was cleaner than before you guys came over. And she was all excited about that because people can relate to those stories. Make sense. Absolutely. All right. Awesome. So let's uh, hear from some people on, I'm going to, I'm going to um, stop this screen share here and let's uh, see what questions we have. We've got about 20 minutes or so. Anybody have any questions from Mike or, or, or me? Don't be shy, everybody. All right. I don't awesome. have a question. This is just a good reminder uh, how important it is to script practice and role play on a, on a consistent basis. Um, so I can uh, just get stronger in, uh, in, in my calls. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great reminder. Absolutely. You know, and then you'll have some stuff to talk about, too, when we're calling, right? And, and the nice thing is, you know, when you practice with other agents, you're not burning, you're not burning leads, you're not burning, like, because the reality is you may call someone, and if you have the wrong conversation with them, they may not do business with you in the future, where you could practice this on an agent, have the wrong conversation, get some good feedback, do it again, have the right conversation. Now you go call that client. You have a good conversation because first impressions, right? Then I'm like, wow, that agent really knows what they're talking about. Even if they don't list right now, they'll be like, you know what? Give me a call back in March and I'll, I'll think about using you in the spring. Okay, good job. Who else? Anybody else have any feedback or questions or anything? All right, well, I shared the script here through the chat, so everybody should have it in the chat. Um, I'm, you know, again, if, if we don't have any other questions, then I, you know, I, could, well, I guess we'll wrap it up, but I'm surprised nobody has anything. Yeah, I do have a question. I was okay. unable to download that from the chat box. Okay. Let's put it up again, David. It's, he probably logged in after you put it up the first time. No, oh, I was okay. actually logged in. I'm just. Oh, really? I'm on an Apple. I don't. I don't know if that's 
oh. causing an issue. Well, if you but want, I... shoot me an email and I'll just email it to you. If All right, that sounds so, great. Here, so hill team at Gmail. I'll put my email in there. And if that, if that didn't work, that. Um, and who who was speaking to Lawrence? Uh, yes, sir. And Lawrence, do you have any questions on this or comments or? No, it's uh, something that I'm very familiar with. It's just um, I'm not. It's uh, adapting to the scripts for the circumstances is where I struggle. So, for instance, okay. based off of the responses, um, mm. and it's it's not so much that I that I. It's the problem I have with scripts, and this is just me. I it's hard to follow simply for this simple fact. It seems on it seems not personal enough for me. Mm -hmm. And when it, my relationships with everything I've sold and bought has always been a very personal experience. It's always been one of those adaptations where I've gotten to know the person. And so changing from that focus to not so much cold calling, but using like Vulcan seven or whatever the case may be, um, that's where it gets kind of like, it becomes an ish moment. But I, I totally understand about the practicing because it makes a, all the difference in the world. Yeah, man, I, I just love that you shared that, man. I appreciate that because I think there's so many people that are going to listen to this and feel exactly the same way. You know, like I'll hear things like, well, you know, scripts just, it doesn't sound, it doesn't seem like it's authentic and, and, you know, it doesn't sound like me. And, and, you know, and that's the really cool thing is it, it, it doesn't initially, right. But what ends up happening is if you continue to practice it and you continue to understand it, and that's why at the top of the script I gave you, it, it, it shows those paragraphs. Those paragraphs aren't for you to script. They're for you to read and understand why we're saying what we're saying. So then you can actually have a conversation with a human being, you know, about why this, you know, why it's a benefit now to list. And, it, and they don't all decide to do that, right? No, because so, the thing is, you got to bring the value to them for them to see it. And that's the key part of that part of the script part of it, or even any value proposition. So the, the, the thing with the script is this is sales, right? I think people forget real estate is sales, especially if you're going to start cold calling or calling people you don't know, right? I wrote a book. My book's called The Sales Playbook. And the essence of my book is how to do business with people you don't know yet. So if you're going to do that, you got to figure out how to connect with that person. And the only way you're going to do that is if you're really, really clear on what value you're bringing to them and you're present with them in the conversation. So yeah, it's, it's impossible to be present with somebody in a conversation if you're so worried about what you're going to say next. No, it's, uh, there's, the the ways that I've adapted or the ways I've understood it and the way I've been trained is uh, mimic. So if somebody goes, ah, you know, you kind of play it back to them, kind of so they relate to you. Um, mm -hmm. Second thing is second thing is to uh, find the motivation. Like for sale by owners, when I call for sale by owners, it's always asking, how can I help you? Most real estate yeah. agents aren't most real estate agents aren't going to offer that to them. Because they just want their business. Sure. But at yeah, the same course, time, yeah. the Value. biggest response you get is a pause in their thought process where they're like, what do you mean? You, what do you want to do to help me? And that's always the, the, mo the win moment. Because at that point, the conversation begins and the motivation is discovered. And then you work from there. So that's what I've gotten out of this. So that, no, the, the whole script thing was really informative. Awesome. Good, good. You know, I, and again, I, I would say, you know, it's funny cause I'm like the guy, like, if, you, if like, I'll tell you I'm the king of scripts. Um, but then what I'm going to tell you is uh, once you know, this, I'm, I'm not, I'm never going to say you need to stick to a script ever. Once you learn the script. Okay. So I was trained as a trainer and, and we had a model called um, uh, memorize, internalize, customize, right? Memorize, internalize, customize. That's the same way when I teach. I teach, I teach eight, eight hour classes. I don't know if anybody else has ever taught an eight hour class, but it's, 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 it can be exhausting. But the only way you can do that is if you have internalized 
the content so much that you know it and you can be present with a room and you can pay attention to when somebody's kind of dozing off and get their attention up. And we can use these same types of tool, um, I don't know if tools is the right word, but strategies when we're on the phones with people. But the only way we can do that is if we're so clear on why we're calling and, and what we're talking about in the call. And that's where the scripts help. I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for the comments, man. That was awesome. That was mm -hmm. really good. Appreciate it. Um, any, and I'll email you the script if you send me an email. Anybody else have anything they want to share or question, comment? This is, you know, it's probably more than we, we have. This is probably a, a topic for the next uh, next role play or next practice. But in other words, there is going to be a percentage of people that are going to basically hold to that spring or not now, not now, um, <clears throat> you know, time frame, right? And then there there's a whole sort of second subset of, so what, how do you tie that in also? In other words, when someone says that it, I'm really waiting till, after the first of the year and they're, they're committed to it. So what other sort of micro commitments can you, you know, um, bring them to? So for example, someone says to me, you know, you know, something that's going to be March or April or, or they say the spring. So I say, great. Well, what's, you know, aside from the time, aside from, um, you know, the holidays and whatnot and the obvious things of the winter, what's important to you about the spring. And they might say, well, you know, my kid finishes school or university or whatever. And I'm thinking of more like May, June. So at that point, I want to start kind of working backwards. I say, Oh, awesome. So you are looking at if you can get your place really under contract by what, by what date would be right for you. And then I want to bring them back and you can kind of, if you step them back to that process, get in line with their thinking, you can end up being, it probably makes sense for us to really sit down probably late February, early March to talk about how to get your house under contract in May or June. Mm. So there's there's a whole other again it's way too much for the last ten minutes of the of a call like this, but to be able to, um, in other words, not to just say oh yeah it's spring I got it don't worry I'll I'll will stay in touch with you because all that all that means is I'll, I'll keep bugging you until I get you know to you, <laughs> but if you if you say no well here's what I'm gonna if you have something already and this is where you know in sort of answers to Lawrence's um, when he's talking about the scripts we know what the answers are, right? We, we, we sort of know what the basic objections are and we know what most people are going to say because we're, we're focused on a conversation of real estate and potential sellers. So there's only so many variables, right? And then, <clears throat> so if someone's really committed to in the spring- But, but you know, see, that's the challenge, yeah. Mike. Most agents don't realize there's only seven things that most sellers are going to say right. and they don't practice for right. those seven things. So when that's they right. get on the phone, they get hung up. They're like, oh, oh, oh. Right, so that's, and, that's and why we gotta- The, that's the professionals gotta will practice. That's right, that's why you that have- There's only seven objections. Right. right, so when someone tells me that they're-, they're and, I, and I can sense from my call that they're committed to that May listing, selling in May, then I wanna go straight, hop right next to them and start working with them and say, well, great. You know, what, what does that mean? That means, we, you know, you know, how soon you need to get the house ready. There's time, there's, there's, there's photography, there's whatever. It'll work out that we should be sitting down and talking, let's say, you know, March 1st. Does that make sense sure. to you? And they'll be like, yeah, that makes sense. So great, I'm gonna put you in there for the first week of March. We'll pick an actual date, I'll call you in the February. And between now and then, I wanna be giving you reports, right? I wanna give you updates that's gonna help you stay on top. Cause you wanna stay, you don't wanna just wake up on March 1 and, and hey, where's the market? You wanna keep, keep your pulse finger on the pulse, right? Well, yeah, of course you do. That's great. So you're going to be getting updates from me, you know, you know, monthly or every two, whatever, whatever you decide is the right thing. So you have, you want to have a, like, you want to know what you're going to say next when someone pushes you out to that, to that time frame. So I'm kind of making, and that's yeah. one of the set of scripts, but it's, um, it's, a, it's also a way of thinking. I think for sense. people that haven't gone through uh, one of our 35 call challenges yet, remember, there's only three things that happen on a call. Remember, there's, right. Right. there's there's you either set an appointment, you set a follow up or you delete the client. Exactly. There's nothing else. So, yep. you know, OK, appointment set. Awesome. OK, then you know what? This is somebody like you just said, Mike, that's waiting till the spring. So we'll follow up. So right. we're going to set them up on a drip campaign. We're going to get them value. We're going to set a follow-up right. call. We're going to mm -hmm. maybe even take a look at the house in January and do a, a pinpoint home evaluation audit for them. Yep. You know, something to bring some value and stay connected to that person. 
right. while they're waiting so that when they do list, we're the peep. Or right. they may be like, listen, my, my brother's my agent. I'll never list with another agent unless uh, even if someone puts a gun to my head, then you're going to delete that person because mm -hmm. there's no need to call that person back, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, hey, anybody else before we wrap? All right. Well, Mike, I think that's uh, I think that's awesome. it, brother. Yeah, it was Great good fun, job, man. It was good. That was fun. Um, I think Temi looks like she has a question or something. No, I was just saying thank you. Oh, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, guys. You're welcome. You're welcome. So what I'll do is I'll post this uh, link. I'll do uh, onto the Facebook group so people can watch it. And if yeah, oh, you know what? Let me um, let me pop this out because if somebody's interested. Um, I'm doing through the end of the year, a 30 minute complimentary coaching call. So all you need to do is go to trycoaching.net. And can you guys see that on your screen? Does that show up? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good. So try coaching. Cause for some reason it's showing a speaker view, it's show, but it's not showing me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you go to trycoaching.net, um, you can get a, you know, I'll give you a 30 minute call and you can see if we can help you with something and you know, and that's it. And then if you want to discuss coaching, we can do that too. But that's, it's not about that. It's about bringing some value to you. So anyway, I want to offer that. And Mike, anything final you want to say or? No, we just, I think we just got to do, do a lot more practice, you know, with the Facebook group, wherever it might be, just, you know, have open scheduled open sessions that people can hop into. And I think yeah. it's, a, you know, every time I do a role play a script, as much as I've been on the phones, you still sharpen your, you, you can, you can almost feel the saw getting a little sharper in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's sometimes you don't think it's happening, but it, you, afterwards you're always like, you know, a little sharper. <laughs> yeah. always, he, he's always improvement, and no matter how right. long you've been doing this for. It's what I've learned from the guys that do it the best and the longest. You watch their YouTube videos, but they'll be the first to tell you they're always, always upgrading, always learning, always improving, sharpening the saw. Sharpening the saw, my friend. I love it. So we'll be back in two weeks right here. Same time. Keep your eyes on your emails on the Facebook group. We'll get this video posted. Michael, thank you for awesome. your time. My pleasure. Temi, dude. everybody that contributed. Lawrence, thank you. Everybody else that's here, thank you. Hope you guys have an awesome weekend and a great Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.